new team members at uh, Ella Sharp Museum and Hearst Planetarium. We have uh, development assistant at the Ella, Tanika Smith, and STEM educator and planetarium operator, Nick Van Acker. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show and welcome to your new jobs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, Tanika, how long have you been at the museum? I've actually been there a little, about four days. Four days? Yes, four oh days. Oh my gosh, you are brand new. They are so impressed they sent me here. <laughs> and it's, it's like one of your duties on the first day of uh, work. Oh, yes. Go, go be on TV. And you've had a few more days. Yeah, there. I've been there uh, a couple of months now. So I started yes. in December. Uh, yeah. We have to have a, a specialized uh, person run the, the planetarium. Are you an astrophysicist? No, I'm actually not. I'm a biologist by oh, training. Right. Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of ways you can get into a planetarium. It's either you know a lot about space and you learn the technology, or you know a lot about the technology and you learn about <laughs> space. And so I'm the latter. Uh, I started off yeah, a degree in zoology, and then I just know a lot about projectors and computers, and I'm a science educator, so I came in through there. Perfect. Yeah. And you, you've been with museums in the past? Absolutely, yeah. I've been to museums for about a decade doing all sorts of fun science education stuff, so planetariums are my next little foray into science, but it's been really fun. Great, great yeah. to have you here. And you're also a STEM educator. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's, uh, it's been great. I do all the planetarium stuff and then anything related to science. Good, you can use your biology and zoology background. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. And Tanika, you, uh, before four days ago, what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, recently finished college in a business background. I have an associate's degree in business, and I have a business certification in business operations. So I, uh, I've been a business owner, but I'm looking to learn more about the planetarium and the museum and how I can help network and grow with them. Fantastic. So um, we've got um, the end of the pandemic, hopefully. I know that's been a, a very negative impact mm -hmm. uh, on the museum. Yeah. You feel th like it's uh, things starting to return? To oh, them? absolutely. I mean, I can speak at least from the education side of it. We have been getting so many calls about field trips and everybody is ready to come back. Um, we're, we're really excited about that. I, my phone's been ringing off the hook with people wanting to come to the planetarium, so. Good. Yeah. You, you closed one of the galleries for a, a refurb the mm -hmm. Jackson Gallery. Yeah, yes. yeah, they actually just closed, I think it was yesterday or today, yes. they, they officially closed it off. So unfortunately you can't come see the History Gallery anymore until it's completely redone, which should be in a couple of months now. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. You probably know a little bit about this, but in the basement at the museum, there's tons of Jackson history and artifacts yes. that haven't been on display. So I think they're gonna just rotate some of that stuff that's never been seen. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So the cool thing about museums is that we have the stuff on display, but our collections are gigantic. There's so much stuff that people don't get to see behind the scenes. And so the goal with the Jackson History Gallery is we're gonna clear all that out, get those objects a rest, and then we're gonna bring in traveling exhibits, all sorts of cool stuff, and then some other spaces in the museum. Yeah, we'll highlight those collections we haven't seen, and we're trying to do that with programming too. It's gonna be really fun. All right, well, let's talk about some programming because we've got spring break coming yeah. up mm -hmm. and contrary to uh, public opinion everybody doesn't leave town <laughs> on spring break nope spring break is our busy season that's yeah. when we jump into full gear yeah um, we've got all sorts of stuff coming up for spring break we're going to be doing planetarium shows every single day of the week during spring break monday through friday twice a day we're going to be opening up uh, ella's house too our historic house mm -hmm. on the campus there we're going to be right. doing house tours every day um, and then of course all of our galleries are open as well are you doing a special uh, program for the planetarium show for yeah. the spring break? We're doing uh, one that's called From Earth to the Universe. It's a really popular one. It talks all about space, and you literally start off on the ground on Earth, and you travel all the way through the universe. So it's a great way to check things out. As a biologist and planetarium operator, is there life on other planets? Oh, we hope so. Um, <laughs> there's, there's been some really interesting news out of Mars recently, and obviously I can't say anything specific about it. The people at NASA know a lot better than I do about it. Um, but <laughs> it looks really promising to me. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of more research that needs to be done um, about there's seen a lot of gases on Mars that look really interesting. So I'm hopeful, but I don't know. If Jeff Bezos came along and asked you if you wanted to fly to Mars, would you go? Not yet. No. Uh, somebody else can be first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, would be, I wouldn't even be last. I just would never do it. Ever. <laughs> never. Never? Never. No. Be fine. You can go on vacation. No, it's claustrophobia. I, I couldn't. <laughs> it, it takes like a year to get there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, and a lot of lot of dried food. So. Yeah. yeah. No thanks. Uh, for um, regular classes, uh, 
those things are returning too, besides yeah. the planetarium? Yeah, so um, we, we have all sorts of programming going on. We, of course, have all of our ceramics classes that are listed on the website. Um, we've got all sorts of other programming going on and a lot of partnerships too that we're doing throughout Jackson. So we're partnering with Dalham Nature Center. Uh, we're uh, rerunning the Explore the Night programs, which we've done the last couple of years, mm -hmm. revamping them. It's gonna be really fun. Um, yeah, we've got all sorts of other stuff coming up. Now, both of you, um, with being new, and mm -hmm. we have a fairly new director, uh, you probably want to add some of your own touches to the offerings of yeah. the museum. Have you thought about what you, what you might want to bring that's new? Oh, yeah. I know. I have been talking a lot with our event coordinator, and we're talking about doing a clean uh, a clean event where we go and partner with the city and hopefully be able to get some of the surroundings out there cleaned up and partner with the people in the community, maybe offer some memberships. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing for us in education too. We're really excited about partnering with the community and figuring out ways that um, yeah, we can highlight the fantastic community we have here in Jackson in the museum. We've mm -hmm. had the Explore the Night uh, event yeah. that you partner I think with Dalham for this? It is, mm -hmm. yeah, Dalham yeah. Nature Center, yeah. And so um, that one's really fun too. So in the past, it's just been, uh, we've taken a nature walk, we've brought out some telescopes, people have explored the night that way. Um, but this year we're doing a bunch of themes every single month. So first one we have coming up in March is all about the science of maple syrup. That's gonna be at the Ella Sharp Museum. Um, and then the month after in April, we're doing frogs and toads. People have a chance to go out to Dalham and actually get kind of muddy, catch some frogs and toads themselves, and learn all about amphibians in Michigan, so. It's going to be really fun. I think you actually have some, do you have maple trees on the property? We have a couple of them, yeah. yeah. So um, the Sharp Merriman family actually used to tap maple trees themselves mm -hmm. way back in the early 1900s. And none of those are around, unfortunately, I checked. Um, but there are still <laughs> around that uh, we used to tap uh, pretty frequently. And we haven't in the past couple of years. But. Well, if the maple sap isn't flowing at the yellow, the beer and wine is. Because the art beer and wine, it's back. Yeah. And it's already on the calendar. Yes, it is. When is it? It is June 11th from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we had a scaled back uh, version of it just to keep people safe. Yes. Uh, what are you thinking about this year? This year we have, we will be ha capping the tickets off from anywhere from 5,500 to 6,000 visitors. Okay. So that's a lot. That's more yeah. than last year. Yes. Absolutely. Had, yeah. had either of you been to Art Bear One before? I haven't had the joy to be there yet. No. Uh, <laughs> Neither I've, have I. The only time I've been in Jackson has been during pandemic, and I moved literally, I think, the week of Art Beer and Wine last year. So <laughs> I didn't have a chance, but I'm really looking forward to it this year. Well, nice. And uh, before the show, Nick told me that um, he moved to the area because his wife is in the area, but you could have lived in a lot of places. You chose right. Jackson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. So what was it about Jackson that attracted you yeah, and your honest, family? Honestly, it was the Ella Short Museum was right. the, the, the prospect of maybe being able to get a job there. But also, you know, we, we went down to Jackson and I have some family down here and we just loved everything going on. There's all sorts of great restaurants, all sorts of great things to do. And it just seemed like a really cool place to explore and figure out. It is. Yeah. And Tanika, you grew up here, but you went yeah. away to college, but you came back. Yes. Um, I've actually went to Jackson Community College. You're local to Jackson. So you didn't go that far away. Yeah, not too far. No, but you decided you want to stay here in, yes, in your hometown. Yes, I, uh, I created my family here. I'm growing my family and my business and growing with the museum. So we're looking to make that better. Nice. Yes. Well, all the things we talked about can be found on the website, right? Yes, yes absolutely. On the website, yes. Website, social media, for sure. And I think some of the things they do uh, fill up, like the Explore the Night. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, Explore the Night planetarium shows almost always fill up. So definitely go check out tickets now. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're excited for spring at the Ella. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. Nice to have you at the uh, Ella and on our show today. Thank you. Uh, Nick Van Acker, STEM educator and planetarium operator and development assistant, Tanika Smith. Next on the show, we've got, oh, quite a few.